came. Glory to God. Amen. Praise be to God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. The free gift came unto, upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered in that the offense might abound. In other words, as we said, as it was codified, it became clear who was in sin and who wasn't. It was no longer as we do today. Well, that's your opinion about homosexuality being sin. No, it's in the Bible. But see, they try, they try to have their opinions. People, people want to excuse sin. I mean, the big thing in the church now is drinking. It really is. And, and, and sadly to say, primarily in our charismatic word of faith churches, because they got so free in Christ, there was no limitation to their flesh. And this happened really, um, really began to happen when the grace message came in in excess. Not that the message of grace is excess, but when, remember James said that they, uh, they took the, the, the uh, grace of God and turned it into lasciviousness or licentiousness, literally in the Greek wantonness, lack of restraint. They turned the grace of God into lack of restraint. They did that back in the, back in the early church days. Think about that. So Paul and, and, and James were, were um, co-compatriots of the same era of writing in the Bible. And they didn't disagree. You know, show me your faith by your works. I'll show you my faith without my works. You know, faith, wor faith worketh by love. I mean, if it's of works, it's no longer of faith. You know, got J people say, well, James and Paul disagreed. In reality, they didn't. Because we understand when Paul's talking about works, he's talking about the works of the law in order to achieve salvation. When James refers to works, he's talking about actions that correspond to your faith. And you, and it's, it's, if you'll just take the, the, the glasses of not knowing what you're talking about off and let the Holy Ghost speak to you, you'll see that with clarity. It's really clear. I started to say stupidity, but I didn't want to sound harsh. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it amazes me how many people want to, want to and they, listen, I can speak to this with great authority. Because when I was a young believer, just getting saved, getting, getting excited about the Lord, I was one of them who didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> Hello. And I had to grow up. And thank God I went to Rainbow and, and got straightened out. Amen. Now, my roommate, one of my roommates, two of my roommates really didn't get straightened out, but the other, the, the other one did, and I did, um, got straightened out. I had one roommate. It doesn't matter what they, you know. They, you know, I'm like, they're, they're clapping in the middle of a service, you know, and then Brother Hagen comes out in 1987, does plans, purposes, pursuits. Clapping is neither praise nor worship. It's a, it's a form of manly or human adoration. It's not praise or worship. You know, and I remember my roommate when, in camp meeting, he said, they can, they can clap if they want to. And I'm like, something's wrong with that. They ain't, something ain't right about it. When they were just, you know, you know clapping when, the, when there was a, a tongue or interpretation of tongues. Why are we clapping? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for a beautiful speech. And we did it all the time. And something just grieved me about that. Oh, I remember, I mean, it was I don't know if y'all were around any of that, but I was there. I mean, the Holy Spirit, you'd have a word, the tongue, and the interpretation of tongues, and everybody just start cheering like, you know, we just scored the winning touchdown at, at the Super Bowl. You see, there's a decorum in the Spirit. There's a time, there's a, listen, there's a difference between excitement about things of God and being disrespectful to the Spirit. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. Now some of, I know some of y'all here. Y'all grew up. Some of y'all grew up Pentecostal. And if the Holy Ghost was moving, you better not even twitch your eyeball. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Pow! Right on the temple. You don't do anything when the Spirit of God's in manifestation. 
You better be reverent. Now, listen, I mean, that probably might be a little extreme, but we were teaching our kids, you've got to be reverent when the Spirit of God's in, them, in manifestation. We don't want to grieve Him. And we got so flippant and so carnal when the Spirit of God moved. And, and some of this was, you know, I mean, let's, let's be understanding. People coming out of denominational churches where everything was rigid and strict and you couldn't do anything, that they, this newfound liberty, they were just so excited about everything, they were just... They, they hadn't been taught properly. Okay? I, 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 so, I understand. so we've grown up some. <clears throat> but we, we still need to understand the move of the Spirit and recon recognizing and honoring the Spirit. Right. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, we, we, um, we, got our, we found out who we were in Christ. And, and here again... Is another issue that we, our, our move has done so much good and had so many flakes in the middle of it. I just don't know what, you know how to how to analyze it all. To be honest with you, I, I just don't. I look at it and I think there's so much good has been done. People have been born again. People found out who they were in Christ, except. The a lot of leaders who rose up did not rise up with the right spirit about them. They weren't submitted to anybody. And we know that. Oh, I'm submitted to so-and-so. Yeah, and then when so-and-so comes and tells you stop, you, you cut off ties with them. You weren't submitted. I'm sorry. If you go around and tell everybody that Dad Hagen's your dad, papa, and he says, well, I'm having a meeting. You come to Tulsa, and you go around and tell everybody, the Lord told me not to go. It hurt my faith. I don't even hear anything else you've got to say because I don't believe it. You've, you've built your ministry going around standing on people's platforms and holding your feet off the end and going, everybody knows who my spiritual father is. All right, son, come in. I've got to talk to you. The Lord told me not to come. Paul would have wrote him a letter anyway. <laughs> now, Brother Hagin went that way. He wasn't that way. He would have, okay, fine. Uh, he he kind of, I don't know if he actually took it this way, but my, my interpretation is if you're going to be dumb, you've got to be tough. Hello? <clears throat> so, um, Jesus came to redeem us from all this mess. I'm trying to figure out how I got way, way, oh, I'm Romans here. Five. Moreover, the law entered in that the offense might abound, but where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so grace might reign through righteousness unto uh, eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's continue reading because the subject hasn't ended. I don't know why they stuck a chapter right there. You know, sometimes you just wonder what were they thinking when they stuck a break in there? Because it, Many times it's, a, it's in the middle of a paragraph. We know it's in the middle. Of, we look, we've got the transcripts. And you look down there, and they put a chapter and break right in the middle of a paragraph. Like it's some whole new chapter. No. What shall we say then? What's, we just talk. What, what's talking about what we just talked about? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Why they stuck a break right there makes no sense to me. Okay? Jesus came as a redeemer to buy us back, to get us out of the mess. Amen? And in that, um, to be a complete redemption, it would have to include the restoring or restoration of the physical body. And we have, now listen, we, we have the mark, according to Ephesians, we've been sealed by the Spirit into that day of the purchased possession. But so uh, we get the glorified body. We've been told in Scripture that when the, and when the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, then corruption shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality. We change in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we meet the Lord in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But he did not leave us 
helpless in the realm of our physical bodies. He provided healing for the body. Now, you will die. If Jesus does not come, you will eventually die. Now, you remember, I had, uh, one of my roommates, he was a, he was a fruitcake. Uh, I believe he may have been the, uh, the original box of granola Christians. Him and my other roommate were in that package together. But he believed that John, the, the, the Apostle John was still on the earth somewhere, <laughs> alive, because what Jesus said was to Peter, what is it that I would, he, that, I would that he would live until I return? And John goes right behind it and says, not that I would, basically, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He was just using, he, John says, basically, he was using it as an example. You do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about him. Even if I want him to stay here alive until I come back, don't you worry about it. Because he had just told Peter he'd be crucified upside down. There's a whole group of people, even to this day, who believe that John, the Apostle John, is alive somewhere on the planet. Because Jesus is going to have him live until he comes back. So that puts him at a couple thousand years old, having been boiled in oil. They tried to, they tried to kill him, boil him in oil. They couldn't do it, so they let him go. <laughs> and they had to freak them out. Now, I don't believe he came out scarred all up and all this. It's like the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. When they threw him in that oil and he came out, uh, you know, thanking them for the, uh, for the uh, hot tub, and it's too much, that's too much for us. So what they did is they banished him. They just put him on the Patma and said, we can't do anything else except banish him. So uh, we'll just leave him. They think banish him, fix it. And that's when he wrote the seven letters, all the letters, and they wrote Revelation. Okay? And in the Revelation, there's the seven letters to the seven churches. Praise the Lord. Okay. God has clearly shown us in his word that he's made uh, he's made the provision for healing of man's body. God lifts the curtain through the prophets and lets us see, lets us see him dealing with sin and sickness throughout Scripture. Um, he is despised and left of men, a man of, power, of sorrows, acquainted with sicknesses. Surely he hath borne our griefs, our pains. He carried them, and we have esteemed him plagued, smitten of God and afflicted. He's pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised by our pieces upon him. And by his bruise, there is healing to us. And Jehovah hath delighted to bruise him. He hath made him sick. If his soul doth make an offering for guilt. And that's Isaiah 53, 3 through 6 from, and, and verse 10 from the um, uh, Young's literal translation. If you look in your book, you see the YLT. That's Young's literal translation. Okay. Dr. Young also had, uh, you, we hear Strong's concordance. Young had a concordance very similar as far as ex exhaustiveness uh, to um, uh, Strong's. But Young did more. He had, a, his, uh, he had his own literal translation of the Bible. Uh, he did more. He did other writings besides just a concordance. Okay? Every literal translation uses sickness and disease there instead of pains and sorrows. Okay? He did not just lay upon Jesus our iniquities, but also our diseases. He was made sick for our diseases. If he was born by him, then it's wrong for us to bear them. If he took our sin, it's wrong for us to keep it. Amen? Since knowledge is attempted to repudiate this, but the truth of God remains, God laid our diseases and sins on Jesus. When he arose from the dead, the body of sin, of spiritual death, had been destroyed. Uh, sin has lost its power, and so has disease. In verse 10 again from Isaiah Young's, Jehovah, Jehovah hath delighted to bruise him. To, uh, he hath made him sick. Now remember what 2 Corinthians 5 say. He hath made him sin. For us who knew no sin. Now I know your King Jimmy says to be. To be is not in the Greek. You look in your Bible. That's why it's italicized. Because the translators are telling you. It's not in the Greek. They added it. And so they, they acknowledge they added it. It's not in the Greek language. He hath made him sin. Well, here Isaiah says, he made him sick. For what purpose? The same purpose that he made him sin? To deliver us from sin? He made him sick to deliver us from sickness. Hallelujah. Christ bore our sins and the penalty that we might be free from sin, its power, and its judgment. Upon the same grounds, 
He bore our diseases and pains. He carried them that we might be free, and we need not bear them. God made him a sin bearer and a sickness bearer. Hallelujah. He who knew no sin was made sin, and him who knew no sickness was made sickness. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Healing today. So upon his twofold earthly and now heavenly ministry as our high priest, he has established the ministry of delivering people from sin and healing their bodies. He bore spiritual death that we might have life. He made provision for man's salvation. He bore our sins, and in his word, he has made provision for healing. James chapter 5, look at that. James chapter 5. Now, I'll tell you something else going on with these crazy people. There's a group out there now saying James is not canon because he disagreed with the, the teaching of grace. Oh, yeah. Why? It didn't fit their narrative, so it doesn't belong in the Bible. Anytime you start doing that, I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to want to slap you, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to argue with you. No. I might jack slap you somewhere, but I'm not going to talk to you. Somebody say hallelujah and amen. Amen. I'm going to try to get this shared back out there because it finally showed back up in my feed that it was shared. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, Facebook is weird sometimes. But James chapter 5, um, verse 12 says, but, but, uh, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither of heaven, neither by the earth, neither, or any other oath, that your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Mary, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Stop. Now he's asking a question. Is there any sick among you? And he said, and he said put up with it because God's got a reason. He's trying to teach you something. What Bible are y'all reading? Are y'all reading the authorized version? The King James authorized version. You got churches who will. And listen, understand this. I use King James. And there's a reason I like, I like the fact that it, it flows with the Greek. Um, they use the majority text and not the minority text. There's, there's a lot of reasons I like the King James. But if you can't figure out what it's talking about, get you one you can. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> well, the King Jimmy. I like that woman told Brother Hagen. He said, well, the Greek said this and the Greek said that. She came up there after service. I want to tell you one thing, Brother Hagen. If the... King James was good enough for the Apostle Paul is good enough for me. <laughs> you can't fix stupid. And besides, you're not reading the, the real King James anyway. The 1611 King James, you can't hardly understand because the language is antiquated to us today. We're, we're, we're reading revisions to the original 1611 because of the, because of the language is different. There's things they use, words they use, we don't even know what they mean because they're so different in the way in the way they're phrased. Okay? So we're not even using the six. Now, I've seen people with 1611 KGV hats. The only King James they use is the 1611. And if you use anything else, you're going to hell. What about the Greek and the Hebrew? You know, what about all the people who who used scripture before the English showed up. Yeah. <laughs> Bless their darling hearts and stupid heads. Is there any sick among you? Let, listen. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over the him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. Now, you know this. We've taught this many, many, many times. The word save in Greek is sozo. Yeah. And sozo, being the lead word the, of the sozo word group, uh, entails not only spiritual salvation, but healing, being made whole, being delivered from temporal evils. That's what that word means. If you study, go get Scofield's Bible, look at his study notes, he carries it. Um, 
I have a, um, a um, very thorough um, Greek library um, from World Library Press out of print now. I have it electronically. I got it electronically before they, they stopped. It, they did away with it. Thank God I got it. because It's a 32-volume, uh, it's 48-volume uh, library. Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek, okay, where all the words are used, how they're used in Septuagint, definitions and all that. You know, very thorough Greek library. And, um, and so I have that. And so that's how, that's how Sozo is defined. And so here, when it says, in the, 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 knowing of all, uh, with, uh, in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Right there, he's not talking about spiritual salvation. Then the Lord shall heal the sick. I'm not changing the Bible. That word in the Greek means that. It does mean to save. But in this case, the context requires he healed the sick. How do you know? Because he raised him up. And he'll raise him up. Another phraseology meaning that people are raised up. They're raised up, they're healed, they're made whole. Right. <clears throat> and, 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 if he's committed.